Sorry about that, everyone. Da Moses was just giving me dancing lessons. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> no. No, I'm good. I, I. He does charge for it's it. It's not so. public lessons. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta you gotta sign up on uh, like Masterclass or whatever one of those websites is that you pay people to. Patreon, I don't know, something. I thought they're going to go with uh, OnlyFans. Uh, that's actually what I use. Um, <laughs> but you might. Uh, look, we're going to get right into it. A few sound issues they had to tidy up. Kind of important to be able to hear what's going on. As now we have Team Liquid on the CT side, the high ground, if you will, of Vertigo versus Entropic. And Entropic's going to try and run up and take that away, but Elise is ready. CZ75 starts off the game with a headshot. Ooh, that was a quick headshot as well. No one even there to go for a trade. Grim. Looking towards that B-bomb site, and he's going to be forced back. So, retake scenario for Team Liquid. They're going to be comfortable with this smoke and flashbang on fall, and likely to set that up in CT spawn to toss it over to begin things at Liege. He's just spot on at the moment. Came to play in this pistol round. Stewie as well. Headshot onto Krat, and let the retake begin. Let it end. It's over with the quickness, as Elian can do absolutely oh. nothing. And Liquid looking good in that pistol. So frustrating for Elian. He's so close. The vertical aspect of his aim was dead on. His horizontal axis slightly off. And he's so close to three headshots in that round. Can't get any of them with the Glock. Either way, I think he was outdone and outgunned. And the manpower of Liquid get the defuse. But it is a plant for the T side. And we know what the second round can entail when that happens. Yeah, well, well, we'll see what they come up with. And I mean, we saw in the previous one, as, as if you tuned into the G2 game, they won both pistols, lost both ensuing second rounds. It's it's tricky. It's no longer just about winning the pistol. Now you have to convert. And sometimes that happens in the second round. Sometimes the buy comes in on the third round. But here, obviously, you're right. With the plant, you've got two Galils. You've got the scout on Ellie and Nickelback and Crad yet to buy. But sure, they're going to bring something into this. And that's just too easy. Elish, very comfortable. Even finding the Lurker as well. Knew someone had thrown utility for his teammate. And waits for that late push in towards middle. Nobody from Entropic getting any kills. That's significant as well, just that little bit of money that they get for that, but they will naturally go for the buy. In fact, I, okay. Galil, I can understand, sure. Krad has 2850. I expected to see one AK in this for the picks. But Again, it's the no kills. Scout. I, I don't know how I feel about a I, Sometimes I don't even feel good about a T side at op on this map, so a scout. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what he can put into play. And I think the other thing is, without a whole lot of success outside of the plant, you don't even get a whole lot of utility behind this buy from Entropic. They have Smoke, Flash, Molotov on Nickelback. And that's it. Oh, I thought he had that fallen. He definitely spotted the head behind the box, but didn't get the shot. In fact, it would have gone through the metal and the box, and it is a scout, so I don't know that that would have been a kill at that point in time but it still would have been significant. He's going to take these fights all day. Got to be careful with that scout. He knows there's one on the opposing side, but more than happy to keep peeking this, especially if there's no... You, again, this is this goes back to the nades. Especially, oh, oh, I saw that coming. Fallen was looking low. He'd given up on the box position, and Ilian was simply going up and down. He had the lineup already done. It's timing. It's timing on that, because you saw him peering over the box a number of times and obviously just not there at the right moment. But look, without nades, without flashbangs, without anything to force Elyse off the angle, or, you know, it, it does rely on someone like Elian taking that straight heads-up duel like he did against Fallen, or these Galils taking these heads-up long-range duels against the M4s, which is not going to be a winning recipe. Stewie and Elish doing work, and Fallen's not even needed. Oh, I love it. They split the map. Oh, I was hoping they would do this. As much as I love the uh, integration of being able to decipher which is lower and under based on who you're spectating, it's kind of cool dynamic, but the radar is much more clear to see, so you could tell Naf on the second level of it was actually on the flank. I love that. Well, love it. Well done, PGL. There you go. See, look at that. Way to go. It's so beautiful. <laughs> just like your eyes, Moses. And Nuke is just like, what, am I a joke to you? <laughs> yes. No, actually, I like Nuke. It's Nuke's good. great. It's good fun. Good, clean family fun. I mean, I don't know if I take my family to a nuclear reactor that's about to be bombed, but yeah, it could be family fun. That's a good point. That's fair. A little stack in mid, they get aggressive, they bust it up, almost almost line up, almost wreck each other's aim, but each of them falling a nap, come out with one kill. Naf's gonna add a second with the USP and Grim chiming in as well. One little switch up in the uh, liquid defense as well. Elige has gone back to his more, uh, this has been the case I think for, for a little bit of time. Uh, Elige has gone back to his more natural position towards the A-bomb site while you have Grim, the rookie, 
holding yeah. down the B-bomb site as the anchor on that side of the map. Very much a rookie uh, within this lineup. Obviously, uh, you have major winner Fallen on the squad. You've got Grand Slam winners uh, as well, but Grim comes in as, as the only player on this team yet to play a major, let alone several of them. Yeah, that's the thing. It's funny calling him a rookie. He has been in the lineup for a year. Yes. You know, he's yeah. been here for some time, but obviously, yeah. First uh, first event of this, of this caliber for him. Elian this time with an AWP and armor, but, ooh, and Fallen's going to win that battle. They go one for one in the early stages of the map. Over the smoke, just barely spotted. And a five on four advantage for the defense. Even Forrester is forced back, 10 HP. He gets damaged heavily. That puts Lackey into play, who says, I've got to find something. My teammates are so low. Good headshot, that's on Nap. Grim up close, through the board, is going to get great damage, can't double up. But now the rest of the utility flies in. And Elyse is here, the final boss to get into this B-bomb site. Oh, that's a missed Molotov yep. as well. Nickelback's got to bail out. Oh, Forrester, he sabotages him. Jason, what concert costs 45 cents? What's that? 50 Cent featuring Nickelback. Elyse, he's still up top by quad. Shuffles over slightly behind the E-Box just to make sure he's completely safe. Little boost, try and get a headshot to the back of the site perhaps. Put the high HP player up even though a headshot's a headshot and you've already got someone down, but it works. Nickelback has fallen, who has fallen. Hopefully he won't fall off the map this game. Yeah, you, that would that would suck. But man, what a good shot as he creeps in. I don't even, Fallen obviously didn't even realize his head was going to be exposed as he crept with the AWP into Elysia's position. And that opens up everything on the whole map. All of a sudden, this round felt like it was handled very, very well for Team Liquid. And now, in a tough situation, Stewie with two health is going to grab that AWP, wants to just get one pick as they enter into the bomb site. Ah, that's so close. So close as they jump across. Forrester down to 10 HP. Gets the shot in return, but that's going to leave him within slim pickings. And an easy shot for Elyse as Nickelback will back away. Ooh, clever enough. He's not going to try and play the ramp. He's going to try and rotate all the way around, and Elyse smokes off the front side. That went too far. That's a gap. I think Nickelback has this now. Elyse, he's aware of it. No, go searching. But Nickelback, knowing that he's not on it now, having checked the bomb, gets the advantage of the time. And even though there's 20 seconds, Elyse will tap it one more time. He looks away. Nickelback's biding his time here. He really wants to confirm, and when he goes back out, he knows he's got to be there. Smoke's going to be gone, so he's got no other play. Nice round from Entropic, and specifically from Nickelback. Again, that boost on the other side of the map really started to open things up. Yeah, that the fallen kill is, is is brutal. That's the one that made this round possible. I don't even know. I don't think he necessarily needed to slide into that position either. Elyse was already there at the default plant boxes, and Fallen just gives one up, unfortunately. Three to one for Team Liquid, two round lead. But the money is uh, starting to get a little bit low. A little NAF at 1,500, everyone else below 1,000. is going to be tagged up, half HP, good work. Lackey as well is going to be dropped. Grim finds an early kill at the B bomb site via Molotov and likely a grenade on top of it as well. I should say as well, as someone points out on Twitter, and how dare I forget, Stewie's actually a major winner as well as Fallen, obviously, with his Cloud9 victory in Boston. So two major winners on the Liquid lineup. Grim, the rookie, that was the one to take down Nickelback as he bides patience and time inside of the site. But Molotov down, he wanted to find a gap, and Naf makes amends with it and catches Forrester retreating in the nick of time as well. Forrester was actually falling behind the wood, and a stray bullet caught him in the head. Heat-seeking bullets from Naf. Was it a stray bullet? It went exactly where Naf wanted it to. All right, fair enough. He <laughs> controls the time and universe. Well, Mac-10 and an AWP to get back into the round. Two on four. Again, you got to say, you got to be happy if you're Team Liquid. The B defense is holding strong early in this game. And the defense towards A has backed off with such an advantage. And again, we mentioned this... In the last stage on Vertigo, a lot of the positioning for the defense at the A bomb site pretends and what you or depends on what utility you have to fight with. Obviously, with Smoke Nade Molotov, you have the tools to delay a plant. You have the tools for a retake. You have some options, and yeah, that Molotov at 15 seconds. They're not even challenging to get into the bomb site. They're not really even going for this round. But that Molotov would hold them at bay until the time gets very, very low. And look at Liquid with the time, the seven seconds that Molotov provides, all in position to go for the retake if the plant was to go down. That's not to be.
So 4-1 Liquid respond immediately after the only round for Entropic. And that's going to make things a bit awkward money-wise. Knocks them back to the 2400 loss bonus. The AWP still for Ilian. Mac 10 for Crad, the old Mac Daddy. That's you, Jason. Mac Daddy. What'd you call the, uh, you called it the Swaggy Maggie? Swaggy Maggie. Is the, is the Mag 7? Yep. All M4s for Team Liquid. Timeout for Entropic as they talk things over, probably trying to decide what, if anything, they can try and pull off with this kind of a, with this kind of a kit. Mac 10, Smoke Molotov, AWP on Elian. Now, I, part of the part of the interesting part of this round two is, okay, so they are going to drop some weapons and buy up around it. That's what the conversation is. Two more Galils added to the table. Because I was going to say, it would be interesting if they went into this with just a MAC-10 and an AWP. Um, it almost felt like it would have been a great chance for Liquid to just get a free op. Now at least they have some things to fight with, so they can put the op into play. And looking for that same angle he found fallen from, but actually more comfortable of going around the corner and investigating along yellow, along scaffolding, and that's where Stewie fires through. Interestingly enough, yes, he is firing in that position. And he has the A1S, but because the bullets went through the wall, there was some bit of residual tracer to it. That time's going to work out for Elise, but a one for one lackey's there as well. Nickelback got taken down just barely. Has the eyes of a hawk. It makes me feel old because I could barely see them behind those sandbag position, but no mistake for them. So Fallen plays out the double, has to support Stewie in this position. Smokes go off, they can't see front side of ramp, and he has to hold the lane, has to be aware of it. Lackey goes for the bomb plant, Krad's already through, jumping around, and Fallen couldn't see it. He was flashed off, and he's on four HP, and down he goes. Killian gets him through the smoke and follow that up with the AWP. In fact, he got him clean, it wasn't through the smoke. He takes Grim as well. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Stewie. He's going to be a little bit frustrated, you imagine, with that one. Unfortunately, good utility usage. That's what you have to say about Entropic in that round. Blinding up Fallen, and you're right, that Mac 10 taking the risk, running all the way around to clear out the position, and it's an easy take from there. A couple nice kills from Elian to add on top of it. And that's now we get to see what Entropic's made of. Now we get to see what they're going to have, what kind of a game plan they're coming into this with. They've gained control of the economy. That was the breaking round for Team Liquid. So Entropic now can spend a few rounds where they have all the weapons they want, and Liquid might have to battle with some scraps. So what is Entropic going to come up with? Slow paced, at least in this round, looking for pushes. Three players towards the B bomb site. They're just going to give time and utility to Elian to peek in with that AWP. And if no one's flushed out by these Molotovs, they're going to be more than happy to take the bomb site, even flashing their teammates. Sorry, Nickelback was the one I think who dropped a Molotov on his teammate earlier. Actually, maybe he was the one who had the Molotov dropped on him. He was part of it. He was, he was, yeah, he was in the mix, right? You know, he just an accomplice or something of the sort. This is a cool little boost. Yeah, seen uh, I've seen it used on rifle rounds as well during retakes. Well, this this used to be where the window was, right? That you yes. could jump through. Famous. Correct, sir. There used to be a little box you get on and go over the top. They're trying to distract the information as to where they are, but this is all about exit kills at this point in time. Uh, small issue with that, though, Jason, is that, oh, okay, Forrester is aware of it. That's one issue. Um, but the other is that, nice shot, Naf, is that even if they get those exit kills from that position, they can't really get to the guns. So they yeah. still, uh, they're just doing economic damage rather than trying to build up their own weaponry. But it'd be cool if you could, like, get a gun down on the ground and then shoot it off the side. If you kill, like, the opera, and you're like, Ooh. Ah, that's... Yeah, now we're cooking with gas. That's clever. That's why you were coach player and I'm just <laughs> a dude who talks about exciting things. That's, that's 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 smart. I like that. But we now have another round for Entropic. So Liquid starting to feel a little bit of pressure on this map. Not going to be all smooth sailing on their CT side. Two in a row for Entropic. And uh, all three of the rounds came in the last four. So that means the money is starting to dwindle significantly for Team Liquid. Last buy in this round if they don't win it. Have extinguished immediately by Grim. They're gonna love that early smoke being deployed as well. They're hoping he stayed in the same position. Grim wisely moves out of it. 
The nade stack following it up, and Elian's looking for him to swing out to the right with some kind of a jiggle peek, so the opportunity might be there. And this is a, it's a decent amount of pressure that we're seeing in Tropic in the early stages of this half applying to this B-bomb. So I wonder if they're trying to apply it to the rookie. And they know he's there at quad because that trajectory of the flash he threw as well as the smoke, it's it's even less of an argument as to whether or not he's up close on the catwalk or further back. So that's why Ilian's waiting with the AWP in that position. The early pressure on this bomb site, even if they don't end it here, if they go back to A, these B players have had to use all their nades to put out these Molotovs to defend this bomb site. So they wouldn't have anything for the retake. And now, if the hit comes in in earnest, Liquid's going to have some players here, but they've got no nades whatsoever. And Grim goes down, Krat finds Fallen as well, and Nav better do something special. He missed the shots. He missed the opportunity for the headshots as they came up the stairs, but he managed to stay alive. You saw him keep his head down, they line up, he gets two. That is pretty special from Naf, as Lackey will only manage to finally put him down now. And that means we've got a two on two. We've actually got a recoverable situation, but look at this rotation back from Entropic. 20 seconds, they have to commit to this. Right now, Liquid's not aware of it. It's not a far rotation, that said, to go site to site. Yeah, but if they get here in time, they can actually stop this. If they can put together any kind of resistance, you don't have to commit, but if you can slow them down, Krad's on low HP, and look at the time, five Gone. seconds, he's going to have to stick the plant. Wow, I'm surprised too he doesn't commit to that, knowing the plant is the factor. But he's in a one-on-one, -on -one. he can't go down because of his teammate. At this point, he doesn't want to get caught out. Lackey still gets him, just barely gets away with it. And that is as close as it gets. Stewie could not win out the round, and we have a 4-4 score and an eco incoming for Team Liquid. Ooh, that's two 1v1s now lost at that at that A bomb site for Team Liquid. That is going to be painful. Two very close rounds to drop, and this is going to give a... It's, it's, it just rolls out the red carpet for Entropic to take the lead. What a tough situation to be in. How do you play that with 15 seconds on the clock? Do you both commit wildly to the fight? Do you... I think Stewie might have thought they'd done enough to delay the plant. Lackey just had to risk it, and it turns out in their favor. Even with, as, like, you're right, that, that, that triple kill from Naf is exactly what he had to deliver if Liquid wanted any chance in the round. And they still can't win it. Morister, it's erased by Naf as they swing out. And the pistols take back the lane with force and doubling up the pressure, but it's Krad that's going to double up the kills to still take down Elyse and Naf. Lackey, meanwhile, will back up the ramp, and they go toward A once more in a one-on-three against Grimm, who only has the CZ-75. There's a Deagle there at his disposal, but he elects not to go for it. Happier with the rapid fire than the distance. Still tapping away, though. He does get Krad. That works out. That's one. Can't find the other. The AK there. I don't think there was really much chance in the round, if I'm honest. And now it's Entropic in the lead with four straight rounds. Oof. Yeah, it's turned pretty quick. At least, look, let's see if we can get back on track now. They have fallen with the AWP early on when you had the sniper duels, the scouts early, uh, the first round with AWPs. Fallen and Elian had gone one for one and kind of picking each other off. Elian's been doing good work since then, but having the AWP, I think, can allow Liquid to have a little bit of a more dynamic defense. And um, if they can start moving that around and finding picks at different places, as you can see, Fallen this round is going to be positioned in mid with Naf. As long as nobody at this ramp gets picked off, but Stewie, he could be in danger. Don't want to peek too far. He knows the angle. Double nade, triple nade. Elige gets dropped. Nickelback finds him. A plethora of grenades thrown through the smoke, and Elige can't get away in time. Can't at all. What's a group of nades called? A gaggle of grenades? Uh, yeah, like a gaggle of geese. I like that. It's got alliteration to it. A gaggle of grenades. Nickelback has gotten all the way to quad. Smoke still there. Molotov. Gone. That gives a spray through. Nap actually blinded up, still manages to get Forrester, so we sit... With the defense having one more player than the offense, but not a lot much more HP and not a lot left to defend the site with this fallen DWP is really the deciding factor. And if make that doubly so, Elium was low on HP, but he still goes down to the op nonetheless, and it's back to its eye game. Yeah, three on two in that scenario, and Naf getting aggressive means Liquid's the one to kind of set the tone and the pace of how that round's going to play out. That's cool to see, and obviously helps Fallen get the information of where to aim his AWP as they find out where the Entropic players are are trying to hold on from all tied up five to five.
Ankle back, rotating in the underpass position. Why am I calling it the underpass? It works. It gets to the ramp. Oof, that nades. Nickelback actually got the worst of that. That's two straight rounds now. Elysia has been picked off previously by the gaggle of grenades. Now by the alt pick. Elian. Ooh, he saw a little shadow of an elbow. And young Stu is barely going to get away. Yeah, I like how you doubled down on that gaggle of grenades thing that time. Yeah. That was good. I'm open to suggestions, but that one feels nice. All right, well, we'll get, feels them, good. We'll get them to you on Twitter. Uh, I like gaggle of grenades. That's not too bad. What if they put multiple smokes down? Is that like a school of smokes? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, all right, cool. I'm, I'm into it. Molotov, backside corner lane, default covered off. Fallen can't stay there with the AWP. Flash is back in to try and delay them and wants to peek. Despite that the flames are still there, he stays wide of them for a moment, but they're going out of the sight. Stewie smartly got away from that flash, but couldn't aim his back in time. Fallen only got one, and Lackey came around the corner too quick for him to know what to do because he knew he was being pressured from the lane side as well as now spires into the smoke. They go for the safe plant, the double instead. No one boosting up onto it, but Lackey's going to stay there. Well, Naf's got the kill through the smoke, spamming away as Lackey tried to back off the plant. Two on two, kit in hand, but no utility, and that means it's going to be tough to get past this op who's got these deep angles. Alien's got it as well. Smoke was fading just enough. Naf, elevated high, knows that he's back behind the Samex. Nearly walked off the ledge trying to dodge the flash, and now he'll put himself back down on the ground and I think try and run for safety. Ten seconds, two to find. And despite having a kit, not likely he does anything with this. Maybe just get that AWP down in the round, and that's good enough for now. That AWP should as well be s exploded and sent off the edge. Now, there it goes. Yep, Forrester saw it. Oh, sorry, dude, not getting that back for you. Should have tried to catch it. <laughs> <Can you> imagine <laughs> if he times the jump, it's like floating out there. That'd he be gets so it, legit. <laughs> round resets before he hits the ground. Hey, buddy, got your AWP. That'd be, that would actually be unreal. Yeah, that would be sweet. Not to be at this moment. Nah, no, honestly, just employ Spider-Man to just, like, web it. Here you go. Yeah, that too. That'd be a liquid thing, though. I don't know why I just went to that. You're right. The Marvel. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Six to five in the favor of Entropic and Liquid relegated back to mostly pistols. Naf's got the only weapon saved, the M4A1S. Molotov and Nade. And Nade's over the sandbags to cover their push up. Forrester's gone down inside that smoke, so maybe a little bit over aggressive. Elijah's gonna have a battle here as he exits, and actually not much of a battle at all. Krad's got it immediately. Doesn't miss a beat. Four on four. Alien. Still tapping away, trying to find that boost position. Nothing of it so far as. Lackey, why are you in my way, bro? Walking Alien up on the ramp, trying to get him killed. Fallen is still well and truly boosted up at the uh, heaven position. Has Stewie in front of him to play off of that information. But again, down to pistols. This was such a great start. Remember, it was 3 nothing and then 4-1. to one, But then it's money that's been gone. And that that's significant as well because we have been seeing, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but so far, at least in the major, we've been seeing this be more CT-sided. A lot of teams seem a little flat on their T-sides. So the fact that Tropic started to get this many rounds strung together... I don't like to read that too early in a half. There's so many circumstances that go into that, and obviously at a pro level, anything's possible, but, but it is concerning to some extent for Liquid right now. No, dude, this, is, this has got to be very concerning. Extremely concerning. Nav left, but yeah. And Tropic's just going to hold the angles. Two players, and he gets dropped. It's, uh, it's a 6-1 to one run for Entropic at the moment. Coming roaring back into this game. And this this can be you know let's not harp on it too much throughout this game but obviously we'll bring it up from the from the from the pre-match that we talked about remember the the, the coach Adren of Team Liquid um, not in attendance at this event and this this is where that that well, kind of becomes it, a factor because you're on this lose you're on this well, Tropics on this bit of a run you don't have your coach who can normally provide you with it turns out he can't talk anyway so. Well, yeah, he can call a timeout, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that time I was trying Do to. Do the baseball signals. That's what we got to get into this. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, th this is where um, you, you could potentially have that tactical voice behind you to give you some kind of adaptation, to give you, to remind you of something that we saw in prep, something that we wanted to do in prep that might be forgotten about, that might be in the back of someone's head they're not saying. 
So quick uh, smoke deployed at the bottom of the ramp for Stewie to play off of. And in fact, he's going to slide down into scaffolding. Was a little bit worried about those shots that were speculatively thrown his direction. Spat from the barrel of the gun of an AK-47. Interestingly, I criticized the T side at AWP, but Alien's been making it work very well. Nine kills so far. And we saw, I mean, nine kills not all on the op, obviously. Yeah. There was a couple on the scout, and obviously got a few other weapons in there. But still, he's having his contributions, and, and he's back in the position where he seems to be able to find picks. Thank you, Alien. You make me sound so smart. Yeah, I think that's either the, the third or fourth pick he's gotten with one of the sniper rifles. One of the scout, I think it's been about, you know, two or three with the AWP as well. So, yeah, it can at times be tough to make it work, but he's finding ways to get those opening frags. Molotov down to delay. That gives time over to Elysian and Fallen to readjust their positioning over towards lane. But now they're stuck in between. They're stuck kind of in no man's lands. They never committed to pushing up. So they're out in the open. And yeah, you get sideswiped. Now Elysian has the same problem except from the other direction. Lackey's got him as well. And there goes Nap. The defense crumbles. It snowballs out of control. And that's a triple kill from Lackey. I think the sequence of the camera movement was actually quite telling in that. I mean, Fallen has a support player on the rifle from Elise, who's just not capable of cutting off the other side. And then he's cut out, and we switch over, and I believe it was uh, Naf that was behind the boxes. None of them really had the crossfires established, and that little bit of utility gave Entropic the exact angles that they needed in that fight. It, almost, it feels like Liquid's getting caught out early at the ramp, those early picks to Ilian. But then they're almost being, too, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, too passive on the A site. Uh, I don't know if it's too passive, but certainly that one didn't feel convincing. It felt like they wanted to get aggressive towards lane. Molotov forced them back, and then they were just kind of stuck in, in between. And yeah, it didn't feel as great as it probably could have. But, you know, you have to give props over to Entropic as well. They're doing a really good job. Look at these nade stacks. And that's the thing. You talked about how good Elian's been at finding some of those picks. He's 3-2 and two in, opening, uh, in his opening duels so far in this game, but, you know, they haven't just gotten those opening kills off him. Remember, they nade stacked Elysia at one point. Now um, they've nade stacked over towards the B-bomb site. We saw them do that a number of times earlier. Molotov's in nade stacking. So they're finding different creative ways to apply a lot of pressure early on in the rounds. And a five on one to make this a nine to five scoreline for Entropic. Very, very good half. And we did say this was a possibility that Entropic could be a problem for Liquid if they didn't come out firing. Elise was waiting the whole time. Didn't get more than one with that kill. Haven't seen anyone go for that jump in a long time, have we? That strafe jump onto the catwalk. Actually, the last time I remember seeing it is when I was coaching Liquid and had fallen to it in a match. And it actually won us the match. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> there you go. Do it more. Don't do it like Cold Zero. <laughs> That was less of a jump and more of like a splat. Yeah, saunder off the edge. Well, eight to five. Eight to one run. Bounced Molotov out close corner. This is interesting from Naf. He's downstairs. He's under the stairs quite literally. But Lackey is very smart to that. They must have heard him get down there. Obviously, the utility put out early. They anticipate it. And they burn and fire and everything else alive. Uh, and Naf is no longer alive, in fact, if I'm honest. So it's all on Grim at B. He will get some support as Stewie has rotated over in this direction. He's going to play to make sure they don't come up middle now and try and split off the back of that as Crad flashes into the site from the elevator position. And they'll play picks over toward ramp as well, so they're really trying to pick this defense apart. They've already rotated well off of the A side. Fallen misses his chance. He needed that pick because now they can run down the AWP. They know he has to back off, and that gives them that little bit more execution space on the ramp itself. They do fortunately bring a liege back over because he was still just holding in middle. Fallen, that smoke's not in the right position. He actually needs to hit these shots. He's got a chance for it. Now he will. Gets one head down. Elise able to find the second. I thought Fallen had that on Elian, but it's not quite good enough. In fact, he goes down in reverse, and the bomb will be planted once more. Smoke flash for the retake. Oh, that takes the smoke away. Elise needs to pick that up if he can, if he knows where it is. Excuse me, Grim might need to. Now into a two-on-two. -two. Elian again in this position, and there's not a whole lot to make him feel uncomfortable. He can pick and choose his battles. And Forrester on the ramp, holding them at bay for the moment, trying to keep space. Grim close to the bomb. He's got a kid as well. Now it's all on Elian. Elyse has him pinned in. He needs to get aggressive at some point, and Grim's going to find him. They run and take the kill and take the defuse, and finally, Liquid stopped the run. They needed that. It had been a hot minute. Four rounds straight for Entropic before this final one.
And Liquid ends with six, a three-round deficit heading into the second half. Yeah, not where they want to be, but at least they get that sixth back in the end. Uh, well, things certainly looked awkward for them. You can see Elige, um very cerebral, I think, Elige is a good way of putting it. He's definitely someone who thinks things through, very technical in his approach to things, plays with a higher sensitivity than most as well because he's just that precise and accurate, and I think that sums up his personality in, in many ways. Yeah, his aim lab clips are... Uh, Pretty foolish. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I wonder if Dan has them all in demo. As he, uh, I'm sure he does. For, yeah, it works for AimLab, Dan. That's one of his jobs. Oh, right yeah, now. he does. Yeah. Nonetheless, DDK, obviously, is who I'm referencing. Uh, and nonetheless, uh, yeah, you can see a, a little bit of contemplative thought in uh, in Elijah's body language right now. So we'll see what they can come up with. Fallen, obviously, at the helm. And it, so far, is going to be a B push via... Well, it may not be a B push. It's a middle push, as it's specified, because they could wrap this right back around to A. Such is the way with uh, with mid. And it's going to be over the top. Still not indicative that they will go onto this site now. They certainly will because Elyse has two. They can flood in. It's not about cutting off rotations anymore. Ilian, he's given up his position on the quad, but he still found one onto Elyse. Thankfully, they traded that back because that could have been awkward if they it's, weren't ready. It's the way he missed the easy shots when no one's looking and he hits the stunner onto Elyse. Forrester now in a one versus three. And yeah, that this is pretty much should clear it. There'd have to be a sequence of mistakes from Team Lif Liquid to drop this round. Forrester is going to be able to get the kit at the very least. And now they all know Nafkush down, found as well. He's baiting them out. He's actually isolated the location of the second player. He knows where Fallen is. Naturally, he'll expect Stewie to try and go for it. He was going to hold that. If he didn't see a head pop out, he was actually going to try and chance that. But now they're going to surround him. He can't, unfortunately, control the one-on-ones when he's that close. And they're uh, pretty much 90 degrees separated in terms of his aim. So that's too much to ask for. And now we go with a round two liquid. Now... Second pistol round they've won. They did not get ecoed in the last, so they've got to convert here to make this a game, in my opinion. Yeah, I, yes. They could still come back. It would be obviously much, much more difficult, especially when you consider in the first half, not getting, not losing that second round. They did rattle off the, the opening three rounds in a row, but once the gun rounds began, it was all in Tropic. So if you if you feel like that's going to, a trend that's going to continue in this one, these rounds are, are supremely important for Team Liquid. Very passive chill, casual opening for the Team Liquid side. Ah, that's... I don't play Vertigo enough to... Uh, and I'm sure lots of people are unaware of it, but I haven't seen anyone actually try and scout through that close angle as frequently. With the scout early as well, that's like the perfect place for it because you, you get the advantage of getting a shot. Even if it's a body shot, it's damage in. When you're up against, you know... Well, I guess there's AKs out, but more weaponry. I wouldn't be as comfortable trying to do that. So I don't mind that approach from Alien in this round. Minute detail, I know, but I, I get fascinated by those things. Some would say I'm simple-minded. But then, simple's so good that I'm not taking that as an insult. <laughs> Ooh, Elish running through, even through the flames, takes just a little bit of damage. Superficial damage. And all of Liquid joining up behind him. Five players coming up to say ramp, Elish tagged, Elian. Doesn't have to back away, and now someone else is going to have to take that position for Elyse. Grim running up, and even even Entropic struggling to stop that Mac 10 from being able to pick off someone from behind. There goes Crad, and the round firmly in control of Team Liquid. Nickelback backs away as Lackey and he have decals and head armor, actually, in the case of Nickelback, but armor as well for Lackey. So don't expect this to really go much further. Any fascinating lore that you know about Vertigo, Jason? I mean, obviously, it's Floor 51 implicating perhaps an Area 51 reference, but other than that, is there any any lore? Uh, this is the same building that uh, Die Hard took place in. No way. Yeah. Who's Bruce Willis in this occasion? He's not here now. This is like, that's when it's finished. Right. I see. This is gotcha. like the prequel to Die Hard, essentially. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Not many people do. Huh. That's pretty impressive. yippee ki -yay. Eight to nine. My love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tempted me. Yeah, I know. I was like, I forgot I'm not casting with Anders. I shouldn't say these things. <laughs> I have a child beside me. <laughs> <laughs> One round back, Team Liquid, as they come into the game. And this round should be a little bit easier. 
Some upgraded pistols for Entropic. One smoke on Crad. Lackey looking for the Deagle opening. Spots the head. Wants to give Stewie a haircut. Not quite yet. His Deagle did some work. He was hitting some fine shots in the first half, but Stewie's going to back away and call it even in that initial clash. So Fallen rotates back. Bomb is obviously waiting to see if they'll find picks. He'll gather that up now. Minute and 25 still on the clock. Lots of time. Naf. And Stewie, the first to make contact over at B. They've walked out at least to the stairwell, and that's a great camera angle. Yep, look at the security cameras that are apparently on drones, but uh, showing us no one home on the site. And the execution of Molotovs will make it harder for them to get back in as well. They'll clear all the corners in that direction. Lackey still, though, is on the mid boost, but it's Stewie that gets the shot instead on the AK. I hold my breath because a Deagle in that position certainly we know can be. A promising factor for the CTs is Forrest, oh, Forrester, sorry, excuse me, will send Naf, I think, all the way to the ground. I don't know, maybe he's just hanging out. Oh, he's just hanging out. He's just laying there. Just sleeping. Having a nap. Round done. Boost again, though, trying to find some exit kills. And uh, if they do exit this way, this, uh, as opposed to the other boost that you showed where the old window used to be, yeah. the mid-boost, you can actually get guns from here, so... See if anyone goes this way. I don't think nah, they will. It's, they shouldn't. Elysia's already. Be pretty, yeah, it'd be pretty foolish not to, to, to go this way. Sorry. Yes, and Elysia, you're right. You had a good point. Yeah, he, no, he just cleared out behind him. So easy to retreat. No reason to even go this direction. Forrester's going to come looking for something, anything. No one's here. He's going to go up with the bomb. Oh. 9 to 9, heading into round number 19. A mass of mullies, a flush of flushes. That's what someone tweeted to me. A flush of flushes? That one's a, a flashes. D wow. Did he actually put flush of flushes? Or did he put flay? He spelled it right. I just, that's tongue twister. We're not doing that one because I already messed it up. Flush of flashes. That, that, that wouldn't be. A flush of flashes, a flush of flashes, a flush of flashes, a flush of flashes. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe I could get used to it. That's too much. Mass of mullies. Not bad. That one works. So, bit of time to talk things over. Doesn't look like a. This doesn't look like a, a tactical. This looks more of like a, a tech thing. Although, actually, well, I'll take it back. I saw some lips moving. Yep, bit of chatter. Okay. Loose lip sync ships. Don't talk during technical timeouts. It is against the rules, but we are back into it. I, I think that might have been technical. I didn't actually see the graphic because we were getting to look into the studios in Stockholm and see what's up with the teams right now. As Crad goes to the crane corner and tries to look down the ramp, but Nickelback is going to give him the uh, real play to that, the support from scaffolding. And a very forward stance, it has to be said, toward the A ramp from the CTs. Meanwhile, it's going to be a mid-take potentially for Liquid. Yeah, Split on B. And Elian was there. He fell back. I'm not sure what caused him to fall back, but that could have been interesting. There wasn't going to be a flashbang that came out. Now he's over towards, you can see, the default plant boxes. The B-bomb site jumped up. He's got his teammate Nickelback has taken over duties of spotting towards mid. And, ooh, Stewie takes a bullet. And Elliot knows what's coming from behind. Is he going to turn in time? He gets one. Oh. He needs more. A little bit blind, and there's too much going on. I thought he had two. I thought he had them both going down as they lined up dropping off. Meanwhile, the trades do go both directions. Stewie's low on HP on 22, but he's aware that there's a potential for a flank, and he therefore has the upper hand because the unexpected becomes unexpected as Crad, however, still wins out the duel. He got a slight amount of damage in. In fact, did more damage overall than the 22 in which was inflicted upon him to take him down. This gives Elise the information he needs. Needs the aim, Elise. Slow it down, calm it down. AK-47 going to go for the jump, going to go for the maneuver. Crad hears him hit the ground, but Elise, oh, wow, still goes down. That's pretty well held from Crad. Yeah, that's really well played from Crad. A high-pressure situation. And I, I think you can't even necessarily blame Elise. He's got to get. A, he's got to choose to get aggressive in one direction. It's got to be towards the guy flanking, towards Crad, or towards Forrester and Ebox. He needs to find some way to just turn that into a one-on-one -on -one and the safety of jumping down allowed him to take his time with that fight and unfortunately just can't win it. First gun round goes to Entropic, and they nurse the one di or the, the one round lead. We've got uh, two different tweets that say a flock of flashes or a frenzy of flashes, which... Frenzy's cool. Frenzy's all right. I like that. Flock is not bad, but I like Frenzy. Because it is a bit of a frenzy, right? Like, you'd be panicking and, you know, lightning going off in the sky everywhere. Fury of flashes. 
That just sounds like you said Furia flashes, which is like a specific set thrown from Fair them. Play. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, Fallen. The X-Ray, he was there, but unfortunately that's through like two walls, actually. And uh, doesn't land as a result of it. And we're back to just holding station on sites. It'll be back over toward B in which Liquid want to put pressure. One round game. Getting close now. They've certainly got a good start to this second half. Don't have a good start to this round because they didn't spot Lackey on a quad. And it took too long for Stewie to respond, which lets Nickelback step out. But Fallen, making no mistake, that gun's gone. Shot off the edge as the body went down. Krad's dead. And it's Ilian that holds again with an AWP. We said he did well on the T side with it. We're already seeing Fallen have contributions. But Forrester has fallen down with an A. That means Bomb is not planted. That's going to buy them a lot of space. Tons of time in the round. But space for the retake and rotation is the bigger aspect. And Ilian's come in. Forrester's got the shot. Retake before the Bomb even gets planted. That is a crazy sequence from Entropic. Nice nade to come in, and you're exactly right. Slowed down the plant just enough. I mean, look, even after that, an incredible shot from Elian as he comes in onto Naf, and a great shot from Forrester as a leech pops up to eliminate that, uh, to, to trade that kill off. It, man, and Tropic's the one making all the plays. I just uh, want to point something out, by the way, earlier, which I just caught now. Um, I did know it was in Tropic, but I said Spirit, and I realize that now. But Hooch is actually the coach I mentioned having an interview with him of and Tropic, and you could see him there at the end of that round behind them. Used to be a caster, did a lot of commentary uh, in the trying the to control ladder. his emotions. You could see him, yeah. He was like, oh, no. like his his body language still wanted to cheer, but he was like holding himself back, which is kind of cute, and I can understand it. You want to be excited, especially as he constantly makes known to people this is a very young team, and he says there's a lot of potential. So yeah, he's very excited as uh, someone who's an older figure of the CIS scene has been around a while to uh, see them really come to their own. I think as a form of protest, we should just wrap, we should just duct tape all the coaches to their <laughs> <laughs> Yes, for the entire day, not just the match. Just punish them even more for really no reason. Yep, I am all right with it. <laughs> it would be even better if you were still a coach. You I might know. enjoy that more. That's why I'm coming up with this idea. I yeah. don't have to do it myself. <laughs> Defense looking good for Entropic. Actually, I should, I'm, I'm not going to take it back, but... Liquid's done, gotten into these bomb sites, right? Like that—that that was a great retake, essentially, from Entropic in the previous round. Um, but but Entropic has looked good in, in a lot of different scenarios. Liquid is applying a lot of pressure to him, just not able to come out with the win in these past two gun rounds. Lackey first kill. Elijah's jumped over to the board. They know what's coming. Nickelback, utility in hand. It's coming out a little bit late. It's not going to do a whole lot. And they've gained the ground since he pulled out the flashbang. Lackey's still doing God's work, and Elian has arrived. Three round lead for Entropic. Three round lead, and importantly, it's the context of those three rounds because that sense the guns came out. So the 9 9 was by virtue of money being in their favor. Now it's starting to be more pressure because Liquid's got to do it the hard way. They've got to claw back into this economically. We'll see what they can come up with. Starting to get dicey now for Team Liquid. Three rounds back with pistols and Tropic a good chance to continue to grow this lead, but ooh, inside the Molotov, Forrester's gonna double him up. Two for one, I'll be happy with that. And at this point, if you're in Tropic and you can survive with these four players alive and build up some bank and economy, at this stage of the game with the way Liquid is, you're just kind of hoping if you're in Tropic that you can have that one one round grace period, essentially, where if you lose a round, you have another full buy behind it. Yep. Definitely takes pressure off of it, means that they can be a little more strategic about how aggressive they are in the end as well. Lackey does take down Stewie. So far, that efficiency working out as they still have four players up. That AK comes over. Krat going to support it. Nap's gone low. Very, very low end town. 13 HP. He's desperate to just get one kill. And there you go, Jason. There's four staying alive for you. Yeah, that's good. If you're an Entropic fan, you're, you're very, very pleased with that one. And you, you'll, you'll see the result of it when we get back to the screen and showing how much money they have behind this buy. Flurry of flashes. Look, everyone's chiming in now. I like Frenzy. We're going to go with Frenzy. Frenzy. Frenzy of flashes. Flurry's not bad, though. That rolls off the top well. Forrester, with his two at the start of the round, really did set the tone. And now Liquid, we'll see what they can come up with back onto the guns. But importantly, like you say, not only was it about keeping four alive, it's about the fact that you get to do it against the anti-eco. And even if Liquid do win a gun, you're ready to go again. If you lose more than that against an eco, it's a loss. It's a loss in every way. It's not this time. Crad. 
down and above a very smite gap in the smoke gets the opener. Yeah, on the opper as well. And remember when Elian was on the T side, he had a lot of time to be looking for that pick over the smoke. The same kind of pressure was not applied to him. Nade thrown through onto his feet. And obviously, Krad finding the edge. Elysia's pushed up, and actually, Entropic had no idea, but still, they negate the pressure. Krad doing work as well. He gets three kills in this round. Stewie responds with a stunning follow-up headshot. Two-on-three situation for Stewie, and Naf and Liquid could desperately use it. It's, it, it's, it's hard to call out Elysia because he's still having a reasonably good game. 16 and 16, second on the scoreboard. But he doesn't seem to have that pinpoint headshot accuracy today that we're used to seeing. When the guy slides up there at, 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 at specifically in lane, and he's down below looking up, all he has to shoot at the head. Typically, I expect Elyse to hit those as hard as a shot as it is, but today just has not been that way. And I say the guy, it was definitely Nickelback that was holding in this position. Woo. He's gone down now. It was Krad that got the kill earlier. He was traded out, remember, but Ilian now forced off the boost and the two-on-two -two from a two-on-three, and you said it. Like, we desperately need this. They cannot afford to go 9-14 with no money left over again. So the bomb plants, but the push through. Nap holds it. That's all he had to do. Needed to keep Stewie alive. Gives him a chance at a one-on-one -on -one against an AWP. And he tries to bait Ilian out. Smokes down. Takes a shot for his troubles. He knows he's on the pistol. He's happy to take that shot to his keep position. But he oversteps the mark, and Ilian ducks underneath. Stewie just not quite as quick as you'd expect. And it's now going to be 14 rounds. That's heartbreaking. He hit some incredible shots to get to that position. He needed one more and couldn't get it. I think... He, I think I think the fact that he was low on ammo really threw him off. You could see he tried to just do the two tap and stop it so he could get one last attempt at it. And Elian just too quick. That's now, what, three 1v1s lost Stewie. at that bomb site throughout this match? And two of them at least were Stewie, if not yeah, all three. Yeah, one was a leash. Well, one was a leash, that's right. So yeah, that's that's definitely, and Stewie is definitely a guy that is emotional in that regard. This game actually feels like, it, it feels like it's closer than the 9-14 to scoreline, but the problem is, if in terms of like different aspects of the game, and Tropic is winning the post-plant aspect. Well, we'll see if the changes. Ilian with the AWP has the smoke deployed in front of him. T-sided smoke at the bottom of the ramp, by the way. That's worth noting. So Liquid is is so concerned of that pick and the fact that they're not getting picks themselves that they're actually smoking the position on their own. Lackey finds Stewie's head. This is what we're talking about between Lackey and Crad these past two rounds or the past couple rounds. This is what we mentioned in the pre-match. This Entropic team, they, they can shoot pretty damn hard. Lackey with 21 kills. Krad's got 15. It's Elian with 18. Forrester. Oh, it's a clever position to play if you can tip your... You sort of tuck your knee back in and get far enough around that pillar that you can catch them on an off angle. You're obviously quite exposed once you are spotted, but you get spotted getting there, and that's going to cost them. So almost an overextension because they had the man advantage, and now it's back to a 4-4, four and, four, and Naf is up above the ramp. He didn't want the fight. He was trying to get into the position and hide behind the pillar and just realize that Fallen was there and had spotted him, so then he felt like he had to take the fight. Liquid has moved things around. Naf is going to be a lurker, and he hears the footsteps. He's telling him right now that they're rotating. Liquid has no options to fall back, though. They don't have the time. Lackey, he's been so good for this team. Oh, they don't check it. They don't look, look at him at all. Crad. Look at Krad. Yeah, no, Krad's already got behind. the flank, and Liege is going to put him down, but there's eight seconds on the clock. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? And he's got to go in and die at this point in time. Six seconds, he's gone. Naf, just sit. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he gets one more for his troubles, and I think he's far enough away they won't be able to pursue, so he'll at least keep the AK-47. As he almost threw caution to the wind and wanted to get the round bonus. Instead, it's 15 and map point for Entropic. And this would be what we would consider, I suppose, as we said, though, that it, it was possible, but this would be the, sort of the first upset, certainly for us on this stream, as I just uh, double check my logic and check on the A stream. Gambit has beat Ents 16 to 7. So convincing for Gambit, and that's the exact start that they would want in this event. Yeah, it's the exact start. Everyone uh, everyone coming in from that, that didn't play in the challenger stage would obviously want, and it looks like not everyone's going to get it. This is usually where we see a couple upsets. Who knows if we can... what would have happened otherwise, but it's part of the obstacles in place for these Legends teams stepping in as a warmed up in Tropic with the situation in Stockholm. Krad's close up. No teammates with him. Initial kill is his. Follow-up kill is his as well. Oh, if he gets a liege, that's just wild. Now, he did get flashed right at the end of the sequence, right? But right as I said that. But a triple kill for Krad pretty much uh, pretty much puts a bow in this map. 
So this is already the cat amongst the pigeons. If Liquid can turn things around, we already get a bit of an established order that might be interesting. As they'll go to the O and 1 bracket for this afternoon's matchups. Naf just waiting to see if they're going to try and do anything with this, but 1 on 5. Be a hell of a time to pull an ace clutch. I don't know that it's going to happen because they're already going for the flank as well. You've got Krat of all people pushing down around. Starts with one. Knows that they're going to repeat on that. Goes back out and Forrester's ready. 16 to 9. Well done for Entropic. I have to say, fantastic. That's exactly the confidence they'll want going into now the legend stage of this event. Yeah, that, I mean, any any of these teams that can cause this kind of an upset and take this kind of a victory in their first match here, uh, you're right. It is, it's like, what, what more can we build?